In this series, I'm going to try to teach you everything that I know about editing in DaVinci Resolve. This first episode is going to be focused on an overall overview and the basics of the timeline. Okay, so once you open up DaVinci Resolve for the first time, you will be greeted by this empty project page. Once you create a project, it will show up here the next time you open up DaVinci. You can create a new project simply by double clicking on the empty project or by going down here and clicking on new project. And after you give it some sort of a name, let's call this tutorial one, and hit enter to create it, you will be greeted by the cut page. Let's focus on the basics first. As you can see down here, DaVinci is divided into seven different pages. Let's go over each of them and I will give you a quick rundown of what they are for. So going left to right, you have the media page. I'm going to be honest, you're never going to use this, like ever. The only thing it's good for is checking your video's frame rate and format. That's pretty much it. Next, you can think of the cut page as a worst edit page. Like you might stumble into it if you buy one of those speed editors, but even after that, the edit page will be quicker after you learn a few basic shortcuts. Okay, then we have the edit page, but I'm going to circle back to this one since we are going to spend the rest of the video over here. The fusion page is your place for motion graphics and visual effects. If you ever used any other creative software before, it's something like After Effects, but instead of using layers, you are using nodes. The color page is actually the reason DaVinci has its reputation. Most of the movies and Netflix series you see are actually color graded in DaVinci Resolve using these exact tools that I'm going to be teaching you. There are thousands and thousands of options here that you can use to customize the color exactly how you want. But I'm gonna be honest with you, you're pretty much just going to create one big preset that you're going to use for every single bit of footage that you have. And of course, I will show you exactly how to do that. The Fairlight page is all about sound. That means all of your music, sound effects, and your voice, of course. It's kind of similar to the color page in that it has a million options. But again, you're just going to create one preset and if you don't change your microphone or you don't move it, you're never pretty much going to need anything else. And last and certainly not least, we have the deliver page. Think of this as your hub for exporting videos, photos and pretty much anything that you can think of. You need a video to be in a custom resolution? No problem. You need vertical video for TikTok, Instagram or YouTube shorts? No problem at all. You just need the audio without the video? Yeah, sure, we can do that. So that's the power of the deliver page and all of the other ones. Let's get back to the edit page and actually start doing something. You're going to spend around 70% of your entire time in DaVinci in the editing page because quite frankly, it has pretty much everything you need. Don't worry if your editing page doesn't look like mine right now, we are going to fix that really quickly by just going up into workspace and now hitting reset UI layout. Now both of our editing pages should look exactly the same. Okay, before I start showing you around, let me actually import some footage so I have something to play with. And you can do this in three separate ways. Number one is simply clicking into the media pool. If this isn't open, just click up here into media pool and it will open up and right click on it and select import media. Now just select the video and hit open and this will open it up for you. The second option is just opening up your folder and dragging it into the media pool. And the last one is pretty much like the second one, just opening up a folder and dragging it straight into the timeline. So if you drag something directly into the timeline, it will also put it in the media pool because in your media pool, you have all of the media, all of the videos, music, sound effects, everything that you can think of that it's going to be used or is used in your project is going to be always present in the media pool. By the way, if you don't see your videos like I do in terms of these little thumbnails that I have right here, you can make them bigger or smaller by this slider and then click around these three icons to select a version that you like. I personally mostly use these thumbnails or this this one where it keeps all of your timelines up here and all of your media right here so you can scroll through it and you can also scroll through all of these videos where you have them as thumbnails. Okay so now that we are scrolling through these and if you double click on a clip it will actually stay here and this is your media viewer. This will display everything that's in your media pool when you hover over it and the second viewer over here that's black currently is your timeline viewer. That means if I move my playhead which is this thing right here and I move it about it will show the part of the video that's currently on the timeline. A best practice here, and pretty much everyone uses it this way, is just by clicking up here into single viewer mode, and now it's basically combining those two viewers into one. So it's mostly going to work as a timeline viewer, but if you need it as a media viewer, it will quickly switch into that mode, and when you go away with your mouse, it will switch back to a timeline viewer. Okay, now we can start adding things to the timeline. And in order to make our timeline a bit bigger, we can hit this arrow right here, which is just going to collapse our media pool to just 
one quarter of the screen instead of half. And now there are also multiple ways to add your footage into the timeline. The simplest one by far is just grabbing your clip and just throwing it onto the timeline. This is pretty much the easiest method, everyone uses it, so you should probably too. The second option is to select a clip or two and then hit Shift F12 and this will add it automatically to the end of the timeline. So as you might have noticed by now, in DaVinci there are many different ways of doing the same thing. And I encourage you just try out every single method and then find the one that is the easiest, the quickest for you. And stick with that one for yourself. For some people it's going to be shortcuts, for other ones it's going to be using the mouse, depending on what you like more. One thing that I have to mention right at the start before even getting into cutting or anything else on the timeline is actually how it works. And this timeline, like pretty much any other timeline in any editing software, is based on layers. Layers means that your playhead over here, this orange thing, is like a guy looking from above. And when he's looking down, he sees the top layer of everything. That means if I throw my other piece of footage above this one, he's now seeing this footage and not this one, because it's blocked from the top. I don't really know how to explain this better through a video, so just play around with it and you will get it. Basically, your timeline is a guy looking straight down and the first thing he sees is the final video product that gets out. And as you may have noticed as I just added the second video, there is a second audio file down here. And this is because our timeline is divided into two sections. The video and picture and title section, basically everything visual goes above this thick line over here and everything audio related goes below it. So you cannot drag them in between, this is just a separation to make editing a whole lot easier. Okay, now before we start going, I need to still explain a few features of the timeline that you need to understand in order to get really proficient with it. So first and foremost, when I move my video file around, you can see that the audio goes with it. This is because this video file is linked with the audio file, and you can see this by this little chain icon at the beginning of your clip. If you want to unlink it, you can either press this link icon, which will unlink all of the clips in your your timeline so that when we select it again and move it about, you can see that it's now desynced. Desynced means that your audio isn't corresponding to the video depending on some time code. The time code over here is for example 25 frames. So the video is 25 frames before the audio actually plays. So it just sounds kind of weird. So I highly suggest that you always keep everything linked that is supposed to be. And if you for some reason, like for example adding a special effect or something like that, need to link some clips, then just right click it and hit link clips over here and as you can see it now deleted the link between them. In order to relink them again just select them both like this or click on one and press command down and click on the other. Now you have both selected, right click on it and hit link clips again. Another feature of the timeline is snapping. So if I have two clips like let's say like this and I want to perfectly nail the start of this clip with this clip right below it, I can just drag it about and it will snap into place. This is done with this magnet, which basically means for snapping. As you can see, if I hold my mouse long enough on it, it will actually say snapping. By the way, the snapping feature is also affecting your playhead. That means if you're doing precise cuts, like you want to just cut off the, this little beginning of the clip and you have snapping on, then it's pretty much not going to be possible because it's going to snap to the end of the clip. If you turn that off with the shortcut or just by clicking the magnetic button, then it's going to be possible to line it up perfectly as you want to. By the way, to zoom in and out the timeline, you can either use one of these shortcuts right over here, which this first one is just zooming out into the entire timeline. The second one is zooming in precisely into the segment with your playhead. And the third one is kind of like a middle ground. You can also customize it with this slider right there, or you can hold down option and scroll with your scroll wheel, which is going to adjust it automatically depending on how much you scroll. And the last feature that I want to mention really quickly before we get into cutting our footage is you can duplicate clips by just holding down option and clicking and dragging and this will actually duplicate the clip that you have currently selected. Okay so now that you understand the basics of the timeline let's get actually to cutting our footage. So the first thing that you should know is how to cut up your video and you can do this the boring way the slow way by just selecting the blade tool over here and then clicking on the exact frame that you want to cut at. But I'm going to quickly show you some shortcuts which will speed it up dramatically. Okay so go up here into DaVinci Resolve and select Keyboard Customization. Now you're probably going to have the default shortcut settings that DaVinci comes with, but bear with me, just change your settings to what I have currently and you will be much better off. So first and foremost, you want to make sure you have selected all commands 
right here. So the first thing you want to search for is to playhead. And now this menu is going to go up and you want to go to ripple. Now hit this little arrow and you have end to playhead and start to playhead. You want to hit this little plus next to end to playhead and type in E and next to start to playhead, you want to type in Q. Then head over to your search, just nullify it and type in split clip. And only this one is going to show up. Again, just hit the little plus and hit W. Okay, now you can nullify it and type in play. Scroll down till you see playback and go all the way down till you again see play forward and play reverse. Play forward should be set to number three and play reverse should be set to number one. Again, just add it with the little plus sign. And now you want to delete it again and search for start playback it's going to show up instantly and put this to number two and space and the last thing we want to change is the delete shortcuts so hit delete scroll all the way down till you see edit timeline and now add d to delete selected and to ripple delete add s you can leave all of the other ones here hit save and close now you have all of your shortcuts set and i'm going to show you what they all do number one two and three if you're using an english keyboard it's just going to be above q w and e this is really important because you can do it all with just one hand. So number one is going to play your footage in reverse. Number two is going to play and pause. That means if I hit it again, it's just going to play forward. And number three is going to play forward. But why do we have three also bind to play forward if two already does that? You see the special thing about number one and number three, which is play reverse and play forward, is that you can hit them multiple times. That means if I hit play forward twice, it's now going to play back at double the speed. And you can see it right here. If I hit it another time, it will play at quadruple the speed. So those are all of your movement shortcuts. And now let's get to the cutting. So instead of grabbing the whole blade tool like we did before, now you just have to position your playhead and select the clip and hit W. This is going to cut at the exact place where your playhead is at. So when I move it about, it will again just cut it with hitting W. E is going to move the end of your current clip to the playhead. That means if I hit E, it's just going to move it to the playhead. If I hit Q, it's basically the same thing, but from the start of the clip. So you can use this to cut really quickly once you get used to it. Now the difference between our delete shortcuts that we set up, one was delete selected and the other one was rip delete. If you just delete something by hitting D, it's going to leave a gap in between the two clips that you previously had. But when we go back and now I hit S, which is rip delete, it's actually going to close that gap automatically. You can also kind of ripple delete by just hitting D and then selecting the empty space and hitting D again, but S is that much faster. And editing is pretty much about having a vision and then executing it as fast as possible. Okay, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about the timeline, but I'm also going to show you something really cool, which you can use to modify your clips themselves. And this is going to be your homework before you start watching the next video so you can play around with something. So when you have a clip selected and you head over here into inspector and you open it up, you can see all of the properties that that this clip has. That means its zoom level, its position, and you can play around with all of these properties and just find out what they do. Because if I was going to explain each and every single one of them, then this video would be super long. So those are your video properties of the clip itself that you can see. And also if a clip has some audio binds to it, linked to it, like we learned, then you will also unlock this audio tab and you can change the volume, the pan and things like that. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this first episode. Hopefully you understood everything. And if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments below. The second episode is going to be all about effects, keyframes, and fusion. So if I already made it, then it's going to be right here for you to watch. And I will see you there.